Hello and welcome to another Harry and Meghan video. I am Royal Reviewer and let's just get straight into it. So today we have, by the way, let's just check the date. Today is the 2nd of March 2021 and we have some updated information on Meghan's court case victory. Now, as we know, Meghan won the court case against Associated Newspapers and we've been waiting for the kind of second part of this. So. The Mail on Sunday has been ordered by the judge to pay 90% of Meghan's costs for the summary judgment. Now I'm going to be reading a piece on this and kind of stopping and starting and discussing it as we go. So a High Court judge today has ruled that the Mail on Sunday should pay 90% of the costs incurred by the Duchess of Sussex for the summary judgment application in, of course, the legal battle. Lord Justice Warby said the percentage was a rough calculation of the costs incurred on matters on which she succeeded in the case. So, uh, by the way, I would like to, to stop and talk about Lord Justice Warby because I remember when it was first announced that he was the judge, there was quite a bit of criticism online from people who are not British, um, who don't really know or understand the British legal system, saying that it was kind of unfair, that he wasn't the judge that would deliver the justice. Um, and it turns out actually that he has been a very fair and just judge. He, he has applied the law, he's, he's gone by the law, he's followed the law, he's applied the law. Um, so yeah, I would just like to have a big shout out, I think, for Lord Justice Warby because he has been extremely fair um, and dutiful and just literally applied the law, which is what in Britain we like our judges to do. That is typically what our judges do do. We, we have um, a really good legal system here in the UK. Um, so Meghan, obviously, as we know, um, sued Associated Newspapers, um, ANL, they are referred to in lots of articles. Uh, which is the publisher of the Mail on Sunday and the Mail Online, of course, over a series of articles which reproduced parts of that letter, the infamous letter, that she sent to her father in August of 2018. Um, last month, Meghan was granted a summary judgment, which she applied for in relation to the privacy claim, meaning she won that claim without having to go to trial, as well as most of her copyright claim. So at a remote hearing on Tuesday, today, uh, Lord Justice Warby ruled that any financial remedies to be granted to Meghan for the misuse of private information would be considered at a further hearing in late April or early May. So this is still kind of ongoing. Um, so we will get further updates in April or early May. He also said the hearing would also deal with Meghan's claim under the Data Protection Act as well as the issue of copyright ownership. So we'll, I think we'll know a little bit more probably whether or not he's going to determine whether Crown copyright is involved in that or not. He directed that any application by the Duchess for summary judgment in relation to the data protection claim should be filed within two weeks. So he's obviously setting out a time frame there. Lawyers for the Duchess had earlier asked the High Court to order the Mail on Sunday to hand over any copies of the handwritten letter sent to her estranged father, Thomas Markle. Um, so yes, basically, Meghan's lawyers have asked the High Court to order, to tell, to force the Mail on Sunday to hand over any copies they have in their possession of the letter. Um, Meghan's lawyers have claimed that the five articles published in February of 2019 involved a misuse of her private information, breached her copyright and breached the Data Protection Act here in the UK. Lawyers, as I've said, have asked the court, um, have asked associated newspapers to hand over any copies they have and to destroy any electronic copies of it or any notes made about it. So basically anything they have in their possession, whether it be written, notes, the actual letter, electronic, photocopies, whatever it might be, um, to be destroyed. Um, Ian Mill, Queen's Councillor representing Meghan, also applied for an injunction to restrain the acts of copyright infringement and misuse of private information. In written submissions, Mr Mill said, the case is a paradigm example of one in which there is very real need for an 
injunction, it is required to order to protect the claimant's rights and stop the continuing acts of infringement. The defendant has offered no undertaking. The defendant has failed to deliver up copies it has of the letter, such that the threat to infringe and further to misuse her private information remains real. And inexplicably, the defendant has still not removed the infringing articles from the mail online. So basically, they're saying the articles are still up, you still have the letter, therefore you could potentially make a future infringement, basically. Um, Quotes, this is the face of a judgment which has found in the clearest possible terms that the defendant's acts of publishing those articles infringes the claimant's rights. Accordingly, at any time of writing, the defendant defiantly continues to do the very acts which the court has held are unlawful. Mr Mill also sought an order requiring Associated Newspapers to publish a statement about the Duchess's victory on the front page of the Mail on Sunday and the home page of the Mail Online to act as a deterrent to future infringers. So basically, um, as part of, basically they're asking for an apology and part of that apology, Meghan's lawyers are arguing, should be on the front page. The barrister said Meghan was willing to cap her damages for misuse of private information at a nominal award in order to avoid the need for time and cost to be incurred in debating these issues. So in other words, she's saying it's enough that I've won. It's enough that I've been proved right. Um, I'm just going to accept nominal damages. Of course, you know, you could get into a lengthy legal debate over how much money the Mail Online um, Associated Newspapers made from the article. And then obviously Megan could argue um, for, for that money to be paid to her. But she doesn't want to go into all of that. It seems like she's just willing to accept a nominal um, nominal amount for damages. Uh, Mr Mill also ha asked Associated Newspapers to pay £750,000 within two weeks as an interim payment on account of Meghan's legal costs in bringing the claim. In written submissions, Anthony White QC, representing Associated Newspapers, so their lawyers, said his client planned to appeal against the summary judgment ruling, saying that it would have a real prospect of success. Mr White said Meghan's withdrawal of her claim for damages, instead seeking nominal damages, was a radical change of position. In relation to the Duchess's request for nominal damages, Mr White added, it is suggested that £1, £2 or even £5 would do. That really is literally nominal. Mr White also argued that any order requiring Associated Newspapers to hand over any copy of Meghan's letter to her father should be put on hold until any appeal against last month's judgment could be determined. He added, the claimant is not entitled to delivery up of the copy of the letter made by Thomas Markle and given to the defendant unless and until the claimant alleges and proves that the making of that copy by Mr Markle was such that it is an infringing copy. Mr White also said Meghan's application for an order requiring ANL to publish a statement that the Duchess was granted summary judgment was unnecessary. He added the claimant's success on her application for summary judgment was, as referred to above, afforded very extensive coverage across the national media, including the defendant's titles and on a number of newspaper front pages. So they are saying that it's already been covered and there's no need um, to publish this any further. Mr White argued that the Duchess's application seemed to be intended more as a species of punishment or retribution rather than as a necessary and proportionate measure in the interest of the claimant or the public. The barrister finally argued that Meghan's extremely large cost bill of around £1.5 million was disproportionate. ANL's proposed grounds of appeal, which were also before the court, argued that the High Court failed to access the facts that the publisher relied on as an undermining or diminishing the weight of the claimant's privacy right. In the ruling last month, the judge, now Lord Justice Warby, following his recent promotion to the Court of Appeal, ruled that the publication of Meghan's letter to her father was manifestly excessive and hence unlawful. He said it was, in short, a personal and private letter. The majority of what was published was about the claimant's own behaviour, her feelings of anguish about her father's behaviour as she saw it and the resulting rift between them. These are inherently private and personal matters. He said the only tenable justification for any such interference was to correct some inaccuracies about the letter contained in an article in People magazine published just days before ANL's five articles which featured an interview with five friends of Meghan. 
But the judge added, the inescapable conclusion is that save to the very limited extent I have identified the disclosures made were not a necessary or proportionate means of serving that purpose. For the most part, they did not serve that purpose at all. Taken as a whole, the disclosures were manifestly excessive and hence unlawful. He also added that ANL's argument on ownership of the copyright of the letter seemed to me to occupy the shadow land between improbability and unreality. Okay, so there we have it. Literally everything that we know about the updated court case ruling. Um, and obviously there will be a third part to this um, coming up in the future. So if you have enjoyed just the facts, then please give it a big old thumbs up. Don't forget to share on social media and also do hit the bell so that you know whenever I upload a new video. So from me in Shropshire, to you all and goodbye.